Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and today I wanna to talk about the concept of unconditional permission to eat. This is a very tricky concept if you're someone who struggles with binge eating, because chances are you've lost that sense of self-trust in yourself. So what you think you need is actually less permission around food because everything feels so out of control. The notion of unconditional permission to eat comes from the third principle of intuitive eating, which is all about making peace with food. And for me, when I first heard this concept, it blew my mind. It was back in 2010, I read the book, and it made a lot of sense to me. So I tried to do it. And I was really excited because for a couple of weeks, it seemed to work. And by work, I mean, I didn't binge for a couple of weeks. And then the binging came back. So it was another thing that I just discarded for a good few years before I ended up coming back to this idea and trying to figure out what it actually meant. Because it seemed to make so much sense to me that there were certain foods that were just really problematic for me. They were problematic for me physically, mentally, emotionally, and I couldn't control myself. So the idea of the abstinence approach to binge eating recovery made a lot of sense to me. I thought, I can't control myself around these foods. These foods, they hijack my brain chemistry. They make me feel terrible. I have such strong desires for them that I cannot control. And it wouldn't have been hyperbolic of me to say it was destroying me, which meant I, like many people I interact with now, found myself bouncing between this trying to give these foods up and then trying to give myself permission around these foods and feeling like I was failing at both. I couldn't give them up and I couldn't give them to me. I was just out of control and it was really frightening. And I think this idea of unconditional permission to eat is not necessarily the most helpful way of describing it because it's all about freedom. Like the benefits of giving yourself permission are that it reduces conflict around food and also it reduces this idea that now is the only time that you can have it. That's really common when you're binging. It's like you have this urge to binge, you want these foods and you say, okay, I'll have them now because I won't have them later, because I'll do something different later on. And that kind of mentality means that when you have the foods now, it feels like you have this very small window in which you can consume them. So therefore you end up consuming more and more and more because there's that sense that deprivation is coming. That said, it's the word unconditional that I have a bit of an issue with. If giving yourself permission around food is about freedom, let's take a three-year-old for example, they're gonna need some freedom and they're also gonna need some conditions. You don't want a three-year-old running around in the street, but it's what conditions are put in place and why. So with a three-year-old, ideally a loving parent is gonna come in and put in these conditions that come from a place of protection and care and love for this child. So it was a little bit similar for me when I was trying to figure out the permission thing for myself. It was like, what conditions do I need in order to feel free, in order to be able to explore with food and not feel confined, not keep triggering off this rebel, not keep triggering off the part of me that thinks I shouldn't be having these foods. One of the reasons why I was so convinced that this permission thing just didn't work for me was because I think I am naturally, temperamentally more on the impulsive end of the spectrum. I'm also quite impatient. So therefore, when I want something, I want it yesterday. When I want to do something, I want it done. How that translated to food was when I wanted a food and my mind got hooked on it, I wanted it now. And I didn't want to reflect and I didn't want to think about why it was, I just wanted it. So unconditional permission just meant that every time I wanted something, I'd have it. And I wasn't planning because even now I don't enjoy food planning. I find it a bit of a chore, but it is so beneficial to me. So today I know what I'm gonna have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That doesn't mean there's no flexibility. If something changes for some reason or there's something else that I fancy, I'll change my mind. If I want something extra to eat, I will eat something extra. So when I'm talking about planning, I don't mean planning what you're gonna eat and you have to stick to exactly what you've said. For me, it was about reducing the number of decisions I had to make around food. Because so often it would get to dinner time and I would have no idea what I was gonna have. I didn't really have anything in the house. And so part of my binging would be on things like takeaways. I would order takeaways and then I'd feel guilty about ordering takeaways and then I'd have more food on top of that. And that was often how it was getting out of control. So planning became a really important part for me. 
If I give myself unconditional permission to eat with zero plan, I think things would get chaotic again. And I really remember from the first time I read that intuitive eating book, this idea of having all the foods in the house that are previously forbidden. And the word forbidden never made sense to me because I knew myself well enough to know that forbidding myself was probably not a good idea, but I really wanted to be able to control myself around these foods. So what would often happen was I would get all the foods in and there was an initial sense of relief. I've got these foods in, they're always available, I don't have to eat it all now. And again, it was something that would feel like it would work for a bit until I would have a day where all I would want to do was eat these foods. And then that would derail me and that day could turn into two days, three days, four days. And before I knew it again, I'm out of control and I'm saying to myself, I can't have these foods in the house. So I think sometimes when we're giving this advice to have these foods in the house, what we're not taking into account is people's levels of impulsivity. So whilst I think this is a natural part of my temperament, when I'm feeling calm and when I'm just feeling grounded, my impulsivity, it's not there. It's the more emotionally activated that I am that these behaviors are more likely to come out. So what I needed, and I've spoken about this before, was I needed to create like a little bit of a gap between myself and these foods so that I always had permission to go and get them. It was never about I'm not allowed them. That was a really important part of having permission for me. I'm allowed these foods, I'm allowed to go and get them. But I did need to keep these foods out of the house for quite a long time so that I would need to make a conscious choice to go and get them. So what it did is it just removed that impulsivity a bit. I had to think, I had to go and get the food. And that would give me a moment just to ask myself, okay, like what's going on for me? How am I feeling about this? What am I hoping this food's gonna give me? Does this feel compulsive and urgent or does it just feel like I fancy the food? And having that moment imposed on me by the food being further away was really helpful for me. I could have said to myself, and I did say to myself many times, okay, maybe I should just take a minute to reflect and ask myself what's going on before I go for the food that's in the kitchen. But when I was in that impulsive mindset and that impatient mindset and I wanted it now, that just didn't work for me. Another part of my binge eating was I really related to this idea of having this desire to numb. I wanted to numb myself with food. So having unconditional permission to eat all my foods also gave me this unconditional permission to numb. And I don't think numbing with food is bad or wrong in any way, but I knew it was harming me. And I knew that it was happening so frequently that this was something that was a problem. And so another thing that I did, and I, I, I won't labor this point because I've talked about it quite a few times on the channel, was I gave myself permission to eat any of my binge foods whenever I wanted to eat them. The only condition was that I had to sit at the table without any distractions, pay attention and try to enjoy it. So that's not unconditional permission to eat. I put a condition on that. But the condition for me really came from this place of, I wanna break this association of these foods and watching television at the same time. This thing that I kept doing where I was just numbing out and just wanting time to just pass me by to some degree. I didn't wanna do life for a while. And a lot of that was about my relationship with myself because I didn't feel comfortable with myself. There was so much shame around, I think one of the things that's struggling with something like binge eating does for you, or it certainly did for me, was it made me question everything that I thought I knew about myself. And it fed into all these beliefs that I'm inconsistent, I'm undisciplined, I don't, can't keep my word to myself, I'm out of control, all these really um, shame-based beliefs that made me think I wasn't good enough. Another part of the permission thing that I, f I felt I was different from others, when I was hearing other people talk about permission, they talk about this idea of give yourself unconditional permission to eat what you want, and then you will naturally desire the foods that most support you and your body. And that wasn't really the case for me. The permission part was important because it reduced the conflict and it reduced this idea of I have to eat it all now. But I found that, because for me, my binge foods tended to be um, sweet foods, that the more I ate of my binge foods, the more I wanted those types of foods, and the less desirable, the more nutritionally dense foods became. So I had to make a conscious decision to eat more of these nutritionally dense foods in order to address this balance. But in order to keep the permission part, it was never about, I have to eat less of these types of foods. 
It was always, I want to eat more of these kinds of foods, these nutritionally dense foods, you know, more fruits, more vegetables, more fibrous foods, because what these foods did, were well, they really helped me to feel physically better in my body. And having permission around my binge foods really made me feel better emotionally around food. So by taking these two things into account, because sometimes it's unconditional permission, almost suggests like there's no um, critical thinking going on around food. I don't really like that word, critical thinking, but like that idea of checking in with yourself and your common sense. And I know this is tricky when you have so many nutritional messages in your head about what you should eat and when you should eat. So when you're thinking about unconditional permission to eat all foods, I think the first question to ask yourself is, what are your current conditions? What are the times when you say, okay, it's okay for me to eat at these times or this amount or this, these foods? Mine were, I should only eat when I'm hungry and I should eat in a way that promotes weight loss. Those were my two conditions that would keep triggering more binge eating. It wasn't this alone, but it was a big part of what perpetuated the binge eating cycle for me. And one last thing I wanna add about permission. If you're like me, I thought that it was about stopping binge eating. I'll give myself permission if that means I'll stop binge eating. But it's not just that. Yes, it is ideally about stopping or reducing binge eating, but it's also about stopping trying to control and restrict. So if you're not in the out of control and you're not in the control, the middle ground is gonna look something like balance, freedom, choice. But if you feel like you're freed up to make choices and you should use your choices to restrict and control, that's gonna knock you out again and you'll keep coming back to this idea, permission doesn't work for me. If you have thought this before, intuitive eating doesn't work for me, I get it, I've been there. I thought exactly the same thing. And if this is you, I highly recommend checking out the Life After Diets podcast. I think it might have been episode five or six. We did an episode called, But Intuitive Eating Didn't Work For Me. So you might find that helpful to listen to that conversation. And on that note, I'll leave it there for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.